ever hear tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise? Plagueis had given the Sun Guards the night off, and the only other intelligence in the sprawling apartment was the droid 114D, their servant for the occasion, pouring wine into expensive glassware as they removed their cloaks. Sullaston, Plagueis said, holding the glass up to the light and swirling its claret contents. More than half a century old. A toast, then, Sidious said, to the culmination of decades of brilliant planning and execution, and to the new meaning we will tomorrow impart to the rule of two. They drained their glasses, and 114D immediately refilled them. Only you could have brought this to fruition, Darth Plagueis, Sidious said, settling into a chair. I will endeavor to live up to your expectations and fulfill my responsibility. Plagueis took the compliment in stride, neither haughty nor embarrassed. With my guidance and your charisma, we will soon be in a position to initiate the final act of the grand plan. Making himself more comfortable on the couch, he signaled for 114D to open a second bottle of the vintage. Have you given thought to what you will say tomorrow? I have prepared some remarks. Shall I spoil the surprise? Why not? Sidious took a moment to compose himself. To begin, I thought I would say that while we in the Senate have managed to keep the Republic intact for a thousand years, we would never have been able to do so without the assistance of a few beings largely invisible to the public eye, whose accomplishments now need to be brought into the light of day. Plagueis smiled. I'm pleased. Go on. Speaking in a low monotone, Sidious said, Higo Damask is one of those beings. It was Higo Damask who was responsible for overseeing development of the Republic Reserve Administration and for providing financial support for the resettlement acts that enabled beings to blaze new hyperspace routes to the outlying systems and colonize distant worlds. That will come as a revelation to some. In a similar fashion, it was Higo Damask who transformed the Trade Federation. No, no, now is not the time to mention the Trade Federation. I thought I don't see any problem with calling attention to the arrangements I facilitated between the Republic and the Corporate Alliance and the Techno Union, but we must take care to avoid areas of controversy. Of course, Sidious said, as if chastised. I was speaking off the top of my head. Try a different approach. So Sidious did. And as the night wore on, he continued to amend and improvise, touching on Damask's childhood on Maigito and on the elder Damask's contributions to the intergalactic banking clan during his term as co-chair. Wine glass in hand, Sidious paced the richly carpeted floor, often vacillating between confidence and misgiving. More than once, Plagueis voiced satisfaction with everything he heard, but he urged Sidious to save his energy for the morning. By then, though, Sidious was too wound up to heed the advice and kept reworking the order of the remarks and the emphasis he gave to certain points. The droid brought out a third, then a fourth bottle of the Sullaston wine. Pleasantly intoxicated, Plagueis, who had wanted nothing more than to revel in the sweet taste of victory, was beginning to find his collaborator's performance exhausting, and wanted nothing more than to close his eyes and drift into imaginings of his march into the Senate Rotunda. The looks of surprise, astonishment, and trepidation on the faces of the gathered senators. His long-anticipated emergence from the shadows. His ascension to galactic power. Unfortunately, Sidious wouldn't let him. That's enough for now. Plagueis tried one final time. 
You should probably return home and get at least a few hours rest before... Just one more time. From the beginning. The beginning? Lord Plagueis, you said you wouldn't rest until our win was a matter of fact. So it is, and so I shall, Darth Sidious. Then let us celebrate that as well. Sidious beckoned to 114D. Fill our glasses, droid. With dreamy weariness beginning to get the better of him, it was all Plagueis could do to lift the glass to his nose. No sooner did he set the drink down than it tipped over, saturating the tablecloth. His eyelids began to flicker and close, and his breathing slowed. In twenty years of never having had to contend with Plagueis in a state of sleep, the transpirator clicked repeatedly in adjustment, almost as if in panic. A few meters distant, Sidious came to a halt, gazing at Plagueis for a long moment, as though making up his mind about something. Then, blowing out his breath, he set his own glass down and reached for the cloak he had draped over a chair. Swirling it around himself, he started for the door, only to stop shortly before he reached it. Turning and stretching out with the force, he glanced around the room as one might to fix a memory in the mind. Briefly, his gaze fell on the droid, its glowing photoreceptors whirring to regard him in evident curiosity. A look of sinister purpose contorted Sidious's face. Again, his eyes darted around the room, and the dark sight whispered, Your election assured. The sun guards absent, Plagueis unsuspecting and asleep. And he moved in a blur, crackling from his fingertips. A web of blue lightning bound itself on the mule's breathing device. Plagueis's eyes snapped open, the force gathering in him like a storm. But he stopped short of defending himself. This being who had survived assassinations and killed countless opponents merely gazed at Sidious until it struck him that Plagueis was challenging him. Confident that he couldn't be killed and in denial that he was slowly suffocating, he might have been simply experimenting with himself, actually courting death to put it in its place. Momentarily taken aback, Sidious stood absolutely still. Was Plagueis so self-deluded as to believe that he had achieved immortality? The question lingered for only a moment. Then Sidious unleashed another tangle of lightning, drawing more deeply on the dark side than he ever had. Let's go over the second part of the speech, shall we? He said, smoothing his tousled cloak. You useless old fool. With a snarl, he threw the cloak back behind his shoulders and leaned toward Plagueis, planting his palms on the low table that was now puddled with spilled wine. It was Higo Damask as Darth Plagueis who came to Naboo, determined to suck the planet dry of plasma and set the Trade Federation up as its overseers. It was Higo Damask as Plagueis who then set his sights on a seemingly confused young man and with meticulous skill, manipulated him into committing patricide, matricide, fratricide. Darth Plagueis, who took him as an apprentice, sharing some of his knowledge but withholding his most powerful secrets, denying the apprentice his wishes as a means of controlling him, instilling in him a sense of murderous rage, and turning him to the dark side. Sidious stood to his full height, glaring. It was Plagueis who criticized the early efforts of his apprentice and who once choked him in a demonstration of his superiority. Plagueis who denigrated him in private for hiring an inept assassin to carry out the murder of Senator Kim and yet who allowed himself to be tricked by the Gran and nearly killed by mercenaries. Plagueis who turned away from the Grand Plan 
to focus entirely on himself in an egotistical quest for immortality. Plagueis, who had the temerity to criticize his apprentice for having inculcated too much pride in the assassin he had trained. Plagueis, who attempted to turn his equally powerful apprentice into a messenger and mere intermediary. And Plagueis, who watched in secret while his apprentice tasked their true intermediary to reveal the reborn Sith to the galaxy. Sidious paused, then in derision added, Plagueis the Wise, who in his time truly was, except at the end, trusting that the rule of two had been superseded and failed to realize that he would not be excused from it. Plagueis the Wise, who forged the most powerful Sith Lord the galaxy has ever known, and yet who forgot to leave a place for himself whose pride never allowed him to question that he would no longer be needed. Still struggling for breath, Plagueis managed to stand but only to collapse back onto the couch, knocking a statue from its perch. Sidious moved in, his hands upraised to deliver another bolt, his expression arctic enough to chill the room. A forced storm gathered over the couch, spreading out in concentric rings to wash over Sidious and hurl objects to all corners. In the center of it, Plagueis' form became anamorphic, then resumed shape as the storm began to wane. Sidious's eyes bored into the moons. How often you said that the old order of Bane had ended with the death of your master. An apprentice no longer needs to be stronger, you told me, merely more clever. The era of keeping score, suspicion and betrayal was over. Strength is not in the flesh, but in the force. He laughed. You lost the game on the very first day you chose to train me to rule by your side, or better still, under your thumb. Teacher, yes, and for that I will be eternally grateful. But master? Never. Sidious peered at Plagueis through the Force. Oh yes, by all means gather your midichlorians, Plagueis. He held his thumb and forefinger close together. Try to keep yourself alive while I choke the life out of you. Plagueis gulped for air and lifted an arm toward him. There's the rub, you see, Sidious said in a philosophical tone. All the ones you experimented on, killed and brought back to life, they were little more than toys. Now, though, you get to experience it from their side, and look what you discover. In a body that is being denied air, in which even the Force is failing, your own midichlorians can't accomplish what you're asking of them. Hatred stained Sidious's eyes. I could save you, of course, return you from the brink as you did Venomous. I could retask your body to repair the damage already done to your lungs, your hearts, your aged brain, but I'll do no such thing. The idea here is not to drag you back at the last moment, but to bring you to death's door and shove you through to the other side. Sidious sighed. A tragedy, really, for one so wise. One who could oversee the lives and deaths of all beings, except himself. The Mune's eyes had begun to bulge, his pale flesh to turn cyanotic. You may be wondering, when did he begin to change? The truth is that I haven't changed. As we have clouded the minds of the Jedi, I clouded yours. Never once did I have any intention of sharing power with you. I needed to learn from you, no more, no less. To learn all of your secrets, 
which I trusted you would eventually reveal. But what made you think that I would need you after that? Vanity, perhaps? Your sense of self-importance? You've been nothing more than a pawn in a game played by a genuine master. The Sitari. A cruel path escaped. Reflect back on even the past few years, assuming you have the capacity. Yinchor, Dovala, Eriadu, Mor, the Nymoidians, Naboo, an army of clones, the fallen Jedi, Dooku. You think these were your ideas when in fact they were mine, cleverly suggested to you so that you could feed them back to me. You were far too trusting, Plagueis. No true Sith can ever really care about another. This has always been known. There is no way but my way. Sidious's eyes narrowed. Are you still with me, Plagueis? Yes, I detect that you are. Though barely. A few final words, then. I could have let you die in the Fobosi district, but I couldn't allow that to happen when there was still so much I didn't know. So many powers that remained just outside my reach. And as it happened, I acted wisely in rescuing you. Otherwise, how could I be standing here and you be dying? I actually thought you would die on sojourn. And you would have if the hut hadn't tipped you off to Varuna's scheme. And yet that also turned out for the best, for even after all you taught me, I might not have been able to take the final steps to the Chancellorship without your help in manipulating the Senate and bringing into play your various and sundry allies. If it's any consolation, I'm being honest when I say that I could not have succeeded without you. But now that we've won the race, I've no need for a co-chancellor. Your presence, much less your unnecessary counsel, would only confuse matters. I have more to do what the risk of discovery might not allow me to do, while I execute the rest of the grand plan. Growing an army, fomenting rebellion, and fabricating intergalactic war, corralling the Jedi, and catching them unawares. Rest easy in your grave, Plagueis. In the end, I will be proclaimed Emperor. The Sith will have had their revenge, and I will rule the galaxy. Plagueis slid to the floor and rolled face down. Death rattled his lungs and he died.